you know, except you are the last born. And if you are the last born, you will get married. You will lead somebody. One day you have children. So understand that life is all about what? Leadership. Now let's say together getting results in your leadership assignment. Now that's our focus in this service this morning. And let's not forget in the second service by the grace of God, we are starting a teaching that will take us for four months. We call it Understanding Temptation. Now that's what we'll be thinking for four months. People are backsliding almost every day. So we'll be talking about what, how to understand temptation so that you will not fall into it. But let's undo this one this morning. We are looking at two scriptures together. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Excuse me. <coughs> I read Ecclesiastes 10 and it says, If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put more strength. But look at this. The summary at the B, B says B. But wisdom is profitable to give direction. I come again. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge. We're precious. See, Mr. Aniola. Uh, the edge. Then he must use more energy. So instead of putting more energy, you know, strength and strength, it means that when the accent is done, if you see anyone that is working with extra strength, go and find out. It's a clear sign that wisdom is lacking. Hear me very well. Anywhere you see anybody putting in Ah, uh, ah, uh, bobi, you know, you know, and you are watching. Why are you so? Why are you sweating this much? Why are you working this hard? And uh, your hard work is does not show in your in your in your result life. Go and find out something is lacking. And what is that? It is wisdom that is absent. That's why the Bible says, "For wisdom is profitable to direct." Now take the second one, verse fifteen. Now, verse fifteen. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. We are looking at two scriptures merging together. Now look at this. I love this one. This one says, The labor of fools weary at them, which means fools put in, put in energy. You know, they put in energy and they become tired. They are discouraged. You know why they are discouraged? For they do not even know how to go to the city. Now the word city here means prominence. The word city here means greatness. The word city here means fulfillment. So the foolish man is tired because he's putting in effort. He's not getting result. Can I tell you this truth? Whatsoever you are doing in this life and you are not getting the productive results you desire, it's a clear sign that the wisdom you need is still absent. Anything you are doing in this life, and you are yet to get your desired result. I want you to understand that what is lacking is wisdom. That's why one of the things that every child of God should crave for most in life is wisdom. That's why you know what the Bible says. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the most important. I remember one time, we know we finished a 40-day fast in our church. I started another 40 days fast. You know, by the time I finished my own, God said to me, son, stop for now. Go for wisdom. Now, stop this fasting for now. Go for wisdom. Now, with wisdom in place, hear me, when, you, when wisdom is in place, the result you desire will come. And you will see that when there, wherever there is wisdom, there will be less effort. Am I communicating? Wherever there is wisdom, there will be what? Less effort. So I wrote here, permit me to say, failure is a proof that wisdom is absent. Failure is a proof that the needed wisdom is, is absent. Anything you are trusting God for and you are yet to get the result, it's a clear sign that you have not gotten wisdom for it. You have not what? You have not gotten wisdom for it. Now, when we were trust, I, when I was a single brother, I was trusting God to get married. It was, the, the, there's a divine wisdom that I applied for marriage to come. After my marriage, we were trusting God for fruit of the womb. There was a divine wisdom we applied for children to come. Now, when we're trusting God for, there's, Wisdom is the principal thing. Understand that clearly. I also put it like this in my notes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Wherever wisdom is present, result will reveal it. Write that down. Wherever wisdom is present, results will reveal it. Wherever wisdom is present, results will show it. It is results that will show. 
that there is wisdom being made manifest in your life. So let's go into our teaching. In our leadership assignment, we all should know that result is what guarantees, number one, our stay in leadership and our promotion in the office of, leader, of a leader. Now, what guarantees our stay in that office as a leader? It is what? Wisdom. Uh, well, I mean, uh, a result. If you lack result in any office, they will, be, they will remove you. Understand it clearly. You are not placed into leadership position because somebody likes your face. Any leadership position, they place you in your office, in the church, even at home. It is for one purpose. Hello? Can you carry it? It is for one purpose. Go for results. You go for results. Now, let me come again. In our leadership assignment, we all should know that result is what will guarantee our stay and our promotion to the next level. Let's look at the scripture. Matthew 25 from verse 19. The parable of the talent. Matthew 25 from verse 19. Matthew 25 from verse 19. We'll take it from the... Yes, let's look at this. The Bible says, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Move on. He settled accounts with them. And in the settling of the accounts, move on, next verse, where are you? Verse 20. He settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. Verse 21. Let's see the response of the boss. And don't forget, Jesus our Lord said, this is how the kingdom of God will be. His Lord said to him, well done. Can you see? Now, in leadership, the only thing that guarantees your stay, otherwise they will remove you, is your result. The only thing that guarantees your, your, your promotion is not your prayer. It's your result. It's your result that will guarantee you. You'll say, okay, yes, let's move him up. Praise the Lord. Please concentrate. Your result. He, he said to him, well done. Why will you be giving well done? It's your result that will determine if you'll be giving well done or please move away. It's your result that will, be, that will determine if you stay in that office or you'll be asked, let somebody else take over. It's your result. Now, when he now said to him, well done, he called him good and faithful servant because he was productive. You, you were faithful over a few. He said, I will make you ruler over many things. Can you see he was promoted? Enter into the joy of your Lord. He was promoted. So in leadership, you don't just occupy the office if you are not productive. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm praying for somebody under the sound of my voice. The Lord God. May the Lord God give you ideas and the wisdom that will make you resultful in your assignments in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. He now went further again. Not only that one. He now went to the next one. In verse 22, the second servant came up. Verse 22, the second servant came up and said to him, Master, when you were going, sir, you gave me two talents. Ogasa, I have made extra two. I have gained two more. Do you know that the same master said to the same servant, you have done well. You have gained two more. Oh, very good. Yeah, you too. Come into my joy. So in, in leadership, it is your success result report that guarantees your stay or your promotion. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear your amen. I said, praise the Lord. Say, hallelujah. So, listen. He allowed them to remain as he also promoted them. But if you look at the third servant in the next verse, the third servant said, sir, sir, you know, I, I was not happy with the way you treated me. You gave one five talents. You gave one two talents. You gave me one talent. So, I decided not to do anything with your talent than to bring it back to you. Sir, this is what you gave me. You know what the Bible says? The master called him wicked servant. Uh-uh. Me, I thought that it is the person that wasted whatever he's giving. God doesn't expect you to bring back to him what he gave you. God is expecting that if he gives you anything, he wants you to bring back to him that thing with interest. 
What have you done with what God has given you? That's what he wants to see. So the man got angry, the master got angry and said, that particular one you have, that you have brought back to me, give it to me. Give it to me, which means he was demoted. Now, and he said, take this man to a place of tears, which means he was removed from leadership. We are not called into, the, into leadership office to maintain a position. Did you hear me? We are not called to maintain a position. We are called to what? To be productive in that position. Hallelujah. Now, I wrote here, before we go to the next point, there must be proof of progress if you will remain in leadership. There must be proof of progress if you will remain in leadership. Let's now answer this question. I have four answers to it. Number one, what can you do to get results as a leader? What can you do to get results? What can you do to get results in leadership? What can you do to get results in leadership? What can you do to get results in leadership? I have four answers to it. Let's take number one. What's the first thing to do? Study your, your assignment. I put in bracket, study your field. Now, if it is your life, study your case. Now, everybody should understand his case first. Everybody should understand his assignment first. Everybody should understand his position first. I wrote here, your field is your place of assignment. Why are you to study your field? Listen, the reason is because there is a unique strategy that opens every person's case. A unique strategy. Now, I've shared that with you before. When we were trusting God for fruit of the womb, our own case was different. Now, the members that were coming to see me for prayers, their own cases were different. Now, we all now approach, I had this leading that time. That time I had leading that, okay, we should see a doctor. Now, I took one of our members, let's go see this particular doctor. So when we got to the doctor's office, now, he told this our member, I said, okay, you know what? Madam, I'm going to give you this sachet of drug. Go and try it. After three weeks or four, you can come back to see me. Now, he now said to me, he said, Pastor, tell mommy to lie down on this bed. Let us check her. Now, they did, they used that ultrasound machine to check her. And the doctor said, ah, pastor, mommy have eggs in her womb right now. This is our ovulation season. If you meet her now, she will be pregnant. Can you see that everybody's case is different? I didn't hear, you didn't hear me. Now, that's, that means that you, we all cannot use the same approach to solve our different issues. That's why to get results. Now, I followed the instruction. He said, go and meet madam. And pastor, Within five days, and let's see what will happen. Now, within five days, God did it. Now, the one that was given a sachet, go use this drug within three weeks. Within three weeks, God did it. That's your daughter, Idara. That's my own daughter, Oyi. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's another one too. The doctor said, oh, madam, you don't need anything. Now, go. He gave him a particular date. Madam, go this particular date. You and your husband. They've gone from mountain to mountains. She too. She went home, told her husband, these dates, their baby today, their child today's name is Williams. So can you see the same doctor, Idara, the same doctor, Oyola, the same doctor, Williams. But was it the same method? Different methods. Now that's why there is no how you can get results until you first study your own case. I was at the uh, 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 Ayegun Church this morning. That's my next place of assignment. Now, I was there. We were worshiping together. I was studying the ground. I was looking at the things that is wrong. Those things that are wrong, the things that I, can need, I will need to put right. I was looking at what do I need if this assignment is going to be productive. Most times, we look at other people. And you know, that was the problem with the man with one talent. He was angry because somebody had five. He didn't know that his one talent is a blessing. If you don't know what you have, you will throw what you have away. So, I hear now. So, so, you study your case. Study your assignment. Now, when I was studying, I discovered this. 
everybody's entry to greatness is different. Now look at the life of David. When David was to enter palace, it was music that took him there. What took him there? Music. Can we look for somebody that we play, that can play for the palace? You know, when Joseph was to enter the palace, it was interpretation of dreams that took him there. If Joseph had read about, uh, 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 you know, though he came before him, if he had read about David, Let's say David was before him. And he read about David and he go and begin to develop instrumental skill. He wouldn't enter the palace. Here. Or if jo- David had re- read about Joseph and he go and begin to work on how to interpret dreams, he wouldn't enter the palace. Because in the, in the palace of Saul, they didn't need someone to interpret dreams. The spirit that needs to be sub- subdued can, could only be subdued by music. Now, but if you now look at how did Daniel enter the palace, Daniel entered in his own the unique way. The Bible said they tested them with other people and they discovered that they were how many times? Ten times better than others. Wisdom long were palace. So in the palace of, of Babylon, they needed a man of wisdom. In the palace of Egypt, they needed a man that could interpret dreams. In the palace of Israel, they needed an instrumentalist. How do you get results? You first study your assignment. What's my assignment? Why is it that so many men are failing today? They don't know their, their responsibility as husband. I always tell my children, there was a day we were in the sitting room. And my daughter was, he said, did like this. She raised her hand. And I said, Nola, what happened? He said, Daddy, can I, can I, I said, can you what? Can I get a job? I said, will I? I, and I said, what for? She said, so that at least I can assist in one way. I said, are you okay? Is something wrong with you? Did I ask you for assistance? Are we owing your school fee? Your pocket money, am I not giving you? Are you hungry? Is something wrong with you? I asked all those questions at the same time. And I was telling my wife, you better talk to her. Is something wrong with her? And my wife was saying, are you okay? Are you thinking straight? Excuse me, sir. Do you know that in some homes, 16-year-old is working? But me, I know my own responsibility as a, as a father. One of the things I should give my children as a father is to give them quality education. And they can't get it if they are working and going to school and trying to sponsor themselves. Because the easiest way to lose your child is to allow them to finance themselves when they are under your roof. You won't have control again. Because I understand my role as the father. You can't succeed in an assignment you don't understand. I said, don't, don't ever in your life, I t- don't ever in your life let me hear. If there is anything I cannot afford, it's because you don't need it now. But I will make sure all the things you need now, I will provide by the grace of God. And that was end of discussion. Understand your assignment. People fail because they don't even understand their assignment in the first place. You as a wife, as a mother, what is your assignment in that leadership position? You should understand. See, I hear now. So study your area. In the parable of the talent, we're told that each of those servants Oh, sorry, we were not told what each of those servants did. But I believe they didn't do the same thing. If you study your field well, you will get the needed method for results. Now, for instance, you are pastoring Aegon Church. You should be studying that place. What will open this place? What will open this place? What will make this place to progress? If you go with all the programs we have here, what we have here may not work there. If you go there and say, we are not going to use interpreter, it may not work there. Study your field. Now, most of you listen to Joel Austin. You don't know that in their original service, they preach using their language. It is one of their services that they use English. And that church is the biggest church in their continent. Number two, how do we get results in leadership? What can I do to get results? Number two, 
Decide to walk with what you have. What do you have? Decide to walk with what you have instead of giving excuses. You know, some people, they know how to give excuses. I wrote something down here. I want to leave it to you. Whatsoever you choose to see is what you will see in abundance. Whatsoever you choose to see is what you will see in abundance. If you choose to see fault, if you choose to see, choose to see uh, uh, your inadequacy, that's what you will be seeing consistently. So it means that this number two is very wide. I think this number two is that you should discover what you have. You know, you can't, you can't use what you don't know you have. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Some of you don't have money. You have opportunity. What do I have? Some of you have influence. Some of you have giftings, callings. What do I have? What do I have? That's why I always encourage leaders most times to go into what we call a self-discovery retreat. In the retreat, you sit down to study what do I have that I can use to get what I want. Because you can't engage it if you don't discover it. What do I have? You know, I sat down. I'm not a politician, no. but you know, I read a lot. I read a lot, and I use my mind to work a lot. I was studying our three political frontiers. You know, the, the, we have so many presidential candidates. In fact, in fact, it was this morning I saw that uh, MQ Abiola's son is part of the political aspirant to, of uh, one party. I saw it a challenge. But everybody knows that we only have three. No, let's be sincere. We only have three. When the election gets close, you see that all those people say, how much will you pay me? Let me bring my people. How much will you pay me? Let me bring my people. So we only have Obi, we have uh, Tinumbu, and we have Atiku. But if we study the ground as humans, I'm not talking about God in, in God's intervention. If we study the ground, the man that has a master plan to win this election is Atiwaju. Do you know why? He has been working before now. I was listening to Erufa yesterday, the governor of uh, Kano State, Kaduna State. If what he's saying is true, this man has won. He said, we in the north, we sat down, we had a meeting, all the northern governors. And you know, most times, it is the north that determines presidency in Nigeria. They have the majority vote. He said, we sat down, we all had the meeting. And in our meeting, we concluded that presidency must go to the south. That that was our conclusion. We didn't conclude to, to support anybody from the east. He said, when we now, we now add in the south, we add uh, somebody like uh, Shiba Joe was coming in. We, he started mentioning names. He said, then we decided, okay, let's go to the primary. Whoever wins the primary election. He said, Amechitu was trying to prove. He said, but we all had... All the northerners had sat down, concluded that presidency must go to the north, uh, to the south. He said, we told our president that you are our anchor man. The only person that can continue from where you are, you are going to stop should be from the south. He said, and when they won the primary, when Ashiwaju won the primary election, he said, we all in the south decided and in the north, decided that this is the person we are going to vote for. So when you see that old man coming out to talk confidently, you know why he's talking? He knows what he has. Most of you people that are going to be talking about Obi, 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 Obi on the internet, you won't come out to vote. If you come out to vote, yes, he can have a, he can have a chance. But you won't come out now. If some of you hear, pow! Everybody will say, ah, he go go check out, 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 You begin to say things and you run, run. This man knows what he has. 
You know, I took my time to study this man. Sincerely speaking, I, I am not in any party. I'm not campaigning for anybody. I took my time to study his style of leadership. And I discovered that, you know what his style of leadership is? His relationship. He has been planning, sir. He has been working, sir. Over 20 years. I listened to Dr. Tunde Bakari, Pastor Tunde Bakari. Bakari said when everybody was sleeping, Tunumbu was working. He was busy empowering people, supporting people with political ambitions, giving them money. So when it was time for him to come up and say, Emilio Khan, you think he just came out to say Emilio Khan by mouth? He knows what he has. Now that is how you two as an individual, do you know what you even have? If you don't know what you have, how can you use it? If you don't use it, how can you excel? A pastor met me a few days ago. I wanted to park. He greeted me. Good afternoon. I said, good afternoon, sir. I said, sir, do I know you? He said, sorry, you don't know me. He said, but as, as, I was, as you were parking, I was looking at your picture. I'm saying this illustration so that you can learn something. I, was seeing your, I saw your picture and I said, you are the pastor. He said, sir, sir, sir. Please, God called me. God, God has called me. I was working under a minister and collecting salary, but now I've started my own church. And sir, the gari we drank yesterday, I and my family, is what is in our stomach till this morning. Sir, please help me. What can I do? I'm hungry. He said, my mother is at home too, going from place to place, begging. And I all smiled. He said, sir, you are laughing. I said, yes. He said, why are you laughing? I said, you have your hands. You can walk. I say I'm a pastor. Thank God you can identify me on this bay board. But I walk with my hands. You say, eh? I say, yes, you can walk. You don't need to wait until there is suffering. That this work you see is not 10 years' work. Before we get to a point where people can say, okay, sir, eh, we use this to support. So go and walk. I'm just coming from a business place. I'm walking. Most of us don't know what we have. <coughs> so the man with five talents, because he knew he had five talents, what did he do? He put it to work. The man with two talents, he knew he had two talents. What did he do? He put it to work. The man with one talent because he didn't value his talent. Can the talent confirm that for me? Sir, when we started working, and you remember, no, because those days, Kosi Baba, Kuche Ulua, Konlod Ulumanwa, Iba Odundeni, some of you may not remember their pastor on to Christmas time. Ah, my wife, we sat down. Kill a man, she. She, I'm a do the Kanlodu. Tamo yomani, Baba, Bokwewa, Pastor, she. We didn't wait. We started that time. Ask her. We started with dry cleaning. I called Evan. Evan was a professional, was a professional dry cleaner. Please come and teach me how to iron. He said, Gio, kill a very fish. Money, I'm worried. He taught me how to iron. My wife will wash the clothes in the morning. I will iron it overnight. And still come and resume in the church office in the day. Nobody knew. Do you know what you have? If you don't look within, you won't discover that there are some hidden talents inside of you. And gradually, gradually, we were doing it. Gradually, from dry cleaning, from dry cleaning, we we're doing it. We went into cosmetics gradually, gradually, gradually. We went into starting the school gradually, gradually. So the man now saw me parking and coming down from a car. He says, "Sir, I teach you later now. About my journey, I teach I said, "Sir, if I give you money, you won't understand how to go and discover yourself." A biloko e mino lobo. What do you have? 
There is something in you. So to succeed in leadership, what's number two again? You must what? I didn't hear you now. This, decide to walk with what you have instead of giving excuses. Let's take number three. Okay, to summarize number two, 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. 1 Samuel 22, 2. Let's summarize verse uh, number two. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. Look at the people David had. And with them, he did exploit. Look at the scripture. And everyone who was in distress, one, say one. Everyone who was in debt, say two. Everyone who was discontented, say three, gathered themselves to him. So he became captain over them. And they were about, how many? 400 men with him. Do you know that David recognized these men to the point that he took account of them? He said, I have 400. Many years ago, I attended a conference. Bishop Oedipo said he sent one of his pastors. Please go into the hall. Count the people. Find out how many people are in the church. He said the man went to the hall, came back and said, sir, ah, only two people are there. He said he told the pastor, how many can you create? You saw two people in church. You called them only. Have you forgotten that even God himself said, wherever I find two or three, I, my God, will come down. You now found two, you say only. Bishop Oedipo said he sacked that pastor because of that statement. That if you cannot thank God for the one that you have, it will multiply. Am I communicating? So David had 400. But look at those 400. Number one, they were what? Distressed. Number two, they were in, in debt. Number three, they were dis These were the men. But he counted them and said, how many members do you have? I have 400 members. Stop giving excuses. Let's take number three. we we'll close with number three. What can I do to get results? Number three, gather a team of people that you will work with. A wise man said, if you want to go fast, work alone. But if you want to go far, work together. Now, I put this point here because of all our, some of our pastors from their branches. What, what did I call it again? Gather a team of people that you will work with. Now, look, look at this. The dictionary says a team is a group of people involved in the same activity. A group of people involved in the same activity. So it means that if you will have a team, you need to do two things. How many things? Two. What's number one? Devise and show them a picture of what you hope to achieve. That's the first thing your team must know. Devise and show them a picture of what you hope to achieve. Like, now look at my family now. I and my wife, we are a team. I and my children, we are a team. Now, why did I start with I and my wife? When I was to get married, I shared with my wife the kind of life that I want to live. When I started having children, I was, I was talking to one of us on Sunday. Um, I was trying to help them over their child. I now asked them, I said, see, they were complaining, their child, this, this and that. I said, see, I have three children. By the grace of God, in all the places we have lived in life, my children have never come outside our house to play before. Take your mug big ball. Could you have the crew no lick of the ball? I want mommy to share it. Come on, we can care. Could you have a palo that daddy won't do? Oh, fellow, we can enter. I want mommy to share it. So I was not telling that man. I said, the reason why this your child is somehow dull is because 
your child is being raised by the society, the community. When you need the child, you go and call the child in the fourth house. Now, and how was I able to achieve that vision? My wife and I worked as a team. When we got married, the things we shared together during courtship, I don't want to raise a kind of family where my house will say they are doing one thing. My wife will say they are doing one thing. You know, there are women that does that. Ah, one shall are you? I want the knee. You know, what the television is like, I want to hear it. So, your wife is not at home. She has gone to watch a movie somewhere. You know, there are, there are, you, are, you are talking as if I'm from another world. You must give your team a vision first. Because when people are around you, they don't know what to do. You'll just be blaming them. We never ask, me and my wife, we suffer we didn't raise a family where eh uh, uh, where uh, uh, Shema there in Lossy Street Kijikelog Begusi. This is my wife. We all these things we discussed it during courtship, the kind of life, a life of integrity. My wife will not wear a cloth I will not afford. I remember when we were planning our, our wedding. I didn't have money for wedding gown. But you know, we had courtship. We've discussed our kind of life. So she saw our, our wedding gown herself. She's not a tailor. She was telling the tailor what to do. So the tailor would buy, okay, buy this, buy this, uh, you know, lace material, buy this lace material down, buy the bridal whatever up, so that after the wedding, one my bobo, can you bridal? She removed all the bridal after the wedding and still turned it to gown. Why? Because I showed that division of where I was going. And because we have also discussed too, when we started having children, my children know they don't, you can't sleep anywhere outside our roof. This is uh, my married 21 years. We've, been, uh, we've had children 18 years. My children have not slept anywhere outside our roof. That's our style. That's the vision I established. And these 21 years of our marriage, ask my wife, ask me too. Nobody has ever come. Hello, hello, uh, sir. I came to, to ask for your wife. You say, where is your wife? Uh, uh, three days ago, uh, she told me she came to collect, uh, uh, she came to collect uh, a pamoy, a half bottle. And she, uh, she said she's coming, and she has not come. Daddy, wa, where is mommy? Wa? It did not happen because the vision was clear. Ask my wife. When we were dating, I told her, I'm a pastor. I'm a servant of God. No matter what we do in this life, church is my lifestyle. I will always be in church. So even in our courtship days, ask her, where did she used to come and look for me? Church. Now that we are married, we have brought our children into it. You will only find I and the children in three places. If we are not in church, we will be in the school or any of the business places or at home. Because that's the vision we established. So if you are complaining now, I don't understand. Uh, you are the husband, you are kind. I, mean, I don't understand this kind of useless woman that I marry. My wife, uh, people are just coming every day. This one just finished knocking out. She collected attaché yesterday. This one just finished knocking out. She collected palm oil. What did you discuss during your courtship? In our courtship, she knows. We, I didn't afford all these uh, fast food joints. So, our lorry, we never went. When she's going home, I'll follow her. Sister MC, she majorized. Honey, um, okay, I'm going to check in Rafuni. Okay, I don't need rice 15 naira. I want 20 naira. I'm going to check in Kansi. Ah, Lou, take away. You know, lie long back, black. Oh, my dear, I'm going to Brother in Christ, I'm going to So in my marriage, there is no prayer. Do you understand? Because it was, the vision was clearly stated. But you know if you don't have vision, because you love that sister, you now tell her that sister, you know what? Do you know that my father is the owner of Femi Johnson? You are expanding her appetite. It's true, you are expanding her appetite. And she is the, the daughter of a tailor. She will be saying, ah, 
I'm going to marry the son of a man, the man that owns Femi Johnson, which means I must change all the place and buying clothes. Yes, and change all the place and buying food. Instead of you to leave her in her level, Jeje, you gave her big vision. She now came into your life. Trying to live that big way, you cost it. In working with a team, the first thing you must do, you must show them the picture of the vision. I'm, I used to say it. It's not them say, I'm proud of my children. Even when we are the, I know where they fall. When they fall, they tell me, Daddy, I did this, I did this, I did this. Okay, it is well. Let's go to God together. Let's settle it together. But I'm proud of them. You know why? Because one could be sit be on my jaw. That's the same way you must you must handle, uh, handle your family. If listen, if my wife on the way had told me that, see, I can't follow you to serve that God, I won't marry her. Bible says it must be three. Two cannot work together. I said, but they agree. Now, can you not imagine? I being the senior pastor of Gospel Evangelical Mission, let my wife be a member of Winners Chapel. I say, members, you know what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mama has gone to church. That's the thing. The thing. Vision. In working with a team, educate your team with your vision. Let them know the quality of your vision. I'm bringing it down so that you can, you can use all these principles in every aspect of your life. Even when you employ staffs, let them know what you, the kind of company you want to raise. I want excellence. This is the way I want you to be dressing. And this is the reason why I want you to be dressing this way. Or else they'll be com com committing blunder ignorantly. And you'll be getting angry that these people, why are they doing like this? Why are they doing like this? So what's the first thing you must teach your team? Device and show them a clear picture of what you hope to achieve. That's your vision, your goal, your assignment. Hello? You know when my children say now, uh, they ask them, will you be a pastor? They say, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. I will never be a pastor. I used to laugh. Part of my vision is that my children will work for God. When we get to that point, I know how to inject it. But you know why they are saying, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. They look at the attitude of some members. When they look at it, I say, don't look at that. Leave us and the members. But when you get to that point, you understand. What's the second thing you must show your team? Show them where you want them to come in. You have shown them the vision. Show them their own involvement, their contribution. Because somebody can be around you and not know how to help you. Or you don't know. Somebody can be around you. That's the challenge we had with uh, our almighty apple. He wants to do everything by himself. We are have, about having the same challenge with brother A.Y. Tuna. He doesn't know how to delegate. And I said, no, 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 no. no. When you have people, don't render them useless. Show them their role. I always tell my children, you know, the best thing you can do for me that will make me happy as your father and as a pastor of this church is I want you to excel in your academics. Don't become a prayer point for me. If you don't become a prayer point, you are helping me. Become a praise point for me. Now, those of you that are just coming into marriage, you better begin to, begin to uh, do proper division of arrange it properly. My dear, I'm the head of this household. So thank God for this is how, this is what I want you to be doing for me. This is your role in this marriage. You add what we had yesterday from Mommy Adela. He said they sat down at the entrance of their marriage. And they divided it. Mommy said, okay. Bishop said, what do you want? Let's divide our responsibility. What will you be doing? Mommy said, okay, I will take the food. 
feeding of the house. Bishop said, I'll take the house rent, I'll take the school fees, I will clothe the children, and every other thing. And Bishop himself said, Mommy never failed in her responsibility for once, and their marriage is 31 years. Bishop said, But me, I failed in my responsibility. He said, Because there was a time I couldn't pay school fees, so I brought them home. Mommy, you are a retired teacher, be teaching them in the house. Don't let the people around you feel that they are useless. Show them what you want them to be doing. In fact, it is that thing that you show them that will be their mark point. As a pastor of this church, what is your own responsibility in this church as members? Number one, your responsibility is to make sure you are a doer of the word of God we are teaching. It makes the pastor happy. Not that they are calling me, hello, pastor, are you the pastor of this brother Tijani? He said, yes, what happened? He's with the EFCC now. And he just mentioned your name as the pastor. He said, what happened? He embezzled. I will deny you on the phone. I said, do you mention Tijani? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, did. I don't know him. Because even God himself said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I knew you not. So I've made up and I want to be like God in that aspect from now. You know, I followed one of our members to the hospital. They were treating her. And the doctor of blessed memory, Lanak, said, what happened to you? This is bleeding. Your ears are bleeding. We pray that this eardrum is not, is not burst. You know, that it's not broken, sorry. We pray that this eardrum is not broken. What happened to you? They said, the husband beat him. Bitter. The husband beat her. And they said, he's a pastor. They said, yes. Who is the madman? That ordained that man to be a pastor. And I was the one that ordained him. I was in the hospital. I couldn't say I'm the one. Say, so who is the madman that ordained that man to be a pastor? Moya Agbije. So, what's your first responsibility to us here? Is to do what we are preaching. When, we, when you do what we are teaching, the pastor will be happy. That yes, he's doing his, his work well. But if you are not doing, the pastor will be sad. So let's come back to the leaders. leaders. So, when, when you have discovered the people you have, let them gather them as a team. And in gathering them as a team, what's the first thing you must do? Show them the vision, your goal. What do you want to attain? I was sharing with the person that worked with me at the Lebu Church. I see. Evangelism. How do we do it that you'll be sleeping here on Saturdays? Let's go out Saturdays. Let's do evangelism. I was planning because I want the church to grow. Now, after you've shown the vision, what do I want you to do? My wife knows what to do. I don't know. I don't need to tell her. We have discussed all these things from the beginning of our marriage. She knows what to do. She doesn't need to tell me I know what to do. There are some things my children don't need to tell us. They know what to do. Now, can you just imagine if like this morning now, you put it know, our workers don't know what to do. What do you think will happen this morning? Everybody will have waited. Ah, see the pastor. We've not seen the pastor. And the pastor is hooked up, some, is hooked up somewhere. And I say, we have not seen the pastor. We have not seen the pastor. The technical will say, we are not going online. We have not seen the pastor. Maybe they will post it to the people online. People online, hold on. We have not seen the pastor. Prime ministers will say, don't sing. We have not seen the pastor. The media will say, don't own the engine. We have not seen the pastor. Those in power department will say, don't own the gen. We have not seen the pastor. The ushers will say, no, 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 hold on. We have not seen the pastor. Maybe the police officers will say, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are not coming today. We have not seen the pastor. I don't think I've spoken with these police officers. The last time I spoke with these police officers watching over us here was when we wanted to employ them. They can tell me that. When, when was that? Late last year. I've given the people in charge instruction. They know how much they pay them. 
I have not spoken. To, the first time I spoke with them was the last time I spoke with them. And you see that there is no service on Sunday that police officers are not here. They are there doing their, their job. Why? Because the people that need to know what to do know what to do. The instrumentalists know what to do. That's how to, to live in peace as a leader. You know, I was listening to Reverend Sam at the and I was blessed. Go to the internet. Go to the information to my blessing. Sir? Positive ones. Thank you. Positive ones. Don't listen to negative ones. You know, he went to Canada three years ago. Now he has returned. And he was giving his, uh, his speech. He said, when God said I should leave, people, think, thought I, people thought I was running away. He said, I myself, I didn't know why when God said I should leave Nigeria to Canada. He said, people leave their country when they notice that they are not progressing. He said, but as at the time I was to leave, Desta Christian Center was progressing. The crowd was much. I had no reason to leave. He said it was after I left, three years after I left, I realized that it was a test of obedience. God said to me, now that he said I should come back, can you see that what you have built can survive without you? He said that's how every organization should be. That's why every house where they have to wait for daddy to come before food is ready, that house has problems. If daddy have not come, there's no matches. If daddy have not come, there is no gas. If daddy have not come, there's trouble. That has have injury. If any organization, if the boss is not there, that's why I read the, uh, the book of the man that wrote Ibadan, that owns Ibadan Central, Reverend uh, Dr. Olami Toye's book. Um, what I need to teach my son. The title of the book is uh, What I Need to Teach My Son. I can't remember the title of the book, but it has to do with what you should teach your son about wealth. In one of the chapters, he said, pretend to be dead and see if your business can run without you. He said, and pretend to be dead for one month first. If it cannot run without you for one month, you have not built anything at all. Ah, there's no time. Are you, are you blessed this morning? Are you sure you have learned something? So, so don't forget, show them where you want them to come in, their involvement, their contribution in attaining the goal. I jebe welcome my binu, wa ma lagidi I want to them ba binu mo kan to ye kan she. Oh so kan kan fun won wa binu, bo yin kan duro, ko se to le assist me ninu le, ninu le. My friend, sit down with your spouse. Sit down with your siblings if you are if you are if you have them. Sit down with your your staffs. Sit down with your people. Show them the vision and ask them how they can be involved in the vision. Hallelujah. Now those in the, in the uh, sound, did our home speaker work to this morning? 